Dan, let's talk first of all about Do It Best uh, Corporation. Um, it is, has been around for a long time, since the mid-40s, 1945, uh, the second largest uh, co-op uh, in the industry. Uh, but a lot of people don't know about, about Do It Best. That's right. That's right. A lot of people don't know about us, and, and I would say two answers to that. One is it's a little bit by design. Uh, as an organization that serves retailers and members across the U.S. and in 54 countries, our motto has always been, it's a member first mm -hmm. sort of focus. So we've kind of taken a lower key approach for the organization that serves those members. Um, the other part of that is we really do not do uh, the form of national television advertising that our competitors do. So Ace is a little bit larger than us, Ace Hardware, they're also a cooperative. Uh, True Value is at least right now also a cooperative, uh, a little smaller than us. Uh, but um, most people are familiar with those names, less so with us. Well, let's talk about the co-op model. How would you assess the health of the co-op model today? Well, actually, uh, you'll, you'll find me kind of bullish on the idea of the co-op model. It, it is a model that works exceptionally well. And, and really, uh, the genius of it is it's tax efficient. Um, don't get me started on talking tax issues and things like that. They're, they're, they're not quite as sexy as some of the retail world things. But I love the simplicity and the design of the co-op model because every bit of dividend that's sent out to the owners is tax-free. It's quite an advantage anytime you can operate in that kind of world. Um, and the other thing that I think really lends itself to the strength is the, uh, the equal strength uh, that relies upon small business in the United States of America. Uh, the co-op is successful because individual retailers, independent business across the United States, is actually very healthy and thriving right now. Mm -hmm. And so one just kind of lends itself to the other. As you talk to your retailers, what, what are their big challenges? What are you, what are you hearing from them uh, around the country? Well, a lot of them will look at sort of the marketplace, and it is, it is drastically changing. That's one of the interesting examples. You know, we had in the 1980s the emergence of the big box, and that was a big deal. Uh, but when you see both big box competition as well as the e-commerce world, it is a very competitive, you know, retail landscape that exists today. That's one. Uh, interestingly, though, they are, by and large, less concerned about their ability to compete there. They're far more concerned about talent. Can I find the right kind of folks to work when you've got historically low un, you know, numbers when it comes to unemployment? Uh, the ability to find and retain skilled staff uh, everywhere within the organization, it puts a lot of pressure on their ability to succeed. Yeah, yeah, that's that, their challenge. And, and that talent issue seems to permeate every every industry out there. Continues to be a big issue. It does. Uh, the retailer folks that we deal with, the folks who are in lumber yards and larger organizations like that, they all suffer a little bit from the need for talent. In terms of the home remodeling and, and the home building industries, talk a little bit about that. If there is how you how you sense the health uh, of those important sectors. Yeah, um, it's it, it's interesting. I would say uh, there are pockets uh, that had been strong throughout the entirety of the downturn, but we've just seen gathering strength uh, since then. We're out of the recession, far far past it. Uh, and you have a lot of strength in uh, single-family home construction, multifamily. Uh, you've got a lot of the repair remodel. All sectors of that are working very, very strong. You've got record high lumber prices on top of that. The biggest issue that really is restraining growth is the ability, again, for talent. You've got a lot of folks who are in the builder community, the contractor community, in the downturn who left to do other things. And so... Mm -hmm. The real governor on that ability to grow has been just the talent need uh, for folks to actually work through that pipeline. The demand is so strong right now, you can't even serve it. Yeah. As you look, you became CEO at Do It Best uh, in, uh, in early 2016, so a little over, over two years. That's right. As you look at your vision for the organization going forward, where would you like to take uh, Do It Best in the next five plus years? Next five plus years. Well, our, our vision, our long-term vision is to be the first First choice and best choice for independent retail home improvement uh, across the entire U.S. and in the world as well. So that's a pretty ambitious goal. Uh, in the next five years, you'll see us continuing to move on a path of very strong growth. Right now, if you look at our top line sales, we're up over 10% so far year to date. Our fiscal year ends at the end of June, and we're on pace for a record year. Uh, I expect that growth curve to continue. Very good. Dan Starr is the CEO at Do It Best Corporation. Dan, thanks very much. Thank you, Gary. All right. Appreciate it.